Hey everybody, I'm here with Tara Buff in the Aspen Valley of Colorado and we've been looking at some of her gardens earlier today and one of the things that I noticed was that she has amazing, amazing um, hay racks and containers and so I thought maybe we could um, talk a little bit about how you, how do you get those looking so great <laughs> and how do you keep them looking so great. So um, Tara tells me it all starts with um, planting. So I'm going to let Tara show us how she does it. Thanks. Um, so for a full sun hay rack, and I get the hay racks from Kinsmen, okay. um, I use the cocoa fiber liner, which typically comes with them. You can get it without, and they do sell a replacement liner every year that um, you can do it. So, um, And then they also have hooks that you can use to attach it to a banister or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. um, but we're just using zip ties today. Um, so it all starts off with uh, the cocoa fiber liner. You can get away with just planting the top of it and eventually it will cascade over and be full that way. But I like to go the extra step mm -hmm. and also plant the front of it. So mm -hmm. what I do is I take, I find that kitchen shears work best. Um, and I just kind of cut down about one shear length. And then I kind of create a little V as well. And that way the plant stem has a place to sit. Oh yeah, okay, that makes sense. Good. Yeah, so then the next step, um, you know, before I get into the planting, I usually set up my design mm -hmm. so that it's real easy to just grab. Um, on the ones that we were talking about earlier, they're quite large, so mm -hmm. they take 64 plants. So it can get a little confusing, especially <laughs> if you're doing more than one. Right. Um, so I set up my design, but for the sake of today, I'm just gonna kind of grab. You can start at the beginning, at the middle of it, or you can start on the edge if you prefer. I always make sure to count how many slots that I have mm -hmm. because some of them, this one has an even number that we're gonna be doing, but for the larger one, it's actually a um, odd number. Oh, okay. <laughs> so mm -hmm. again, it's one of those brain teasers yeah. how you wanna do the odd number. And you put one plant per, per gap here and you cut one hole per gap all Correct. the way around. Okay, yeah. got it. Or one slice. One slice. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the sun ones, I really like to use the four inch plants. Um, give them a quick clean up before I put them in. And then um, something that can be a little bit shocking to a lot of people, I then wash the soil off the roots. Just take it all completely off. I try to, uh -huh. yeah. So then um, you can do, use a hose or you can just get your hand in there and really work the soil off of the roots. And why do, you, why do you choose to do that? I think it just makes it a lot easier to plant. They just, um, in, in these little tight, in the tight spaces, you're not fighting all the extra potting Exactly, mix. Yep, exactly. And then it also helps when planting the top row as well. Okay. Um, for plant material, I really like to use a lot of contrasting shapes and colors, mm -hmm. um, making sure that I've paid attention to my color wheel to ensure that the reds and the pinks are the correct hues and all that good stuff. So you don't have orange reds with blue reds and exactly. or orange pinks with blue reds, I guess. And then they, yeah, yeah, got <laughs> yeah. It. Okay. I like to keep it kind of on the harmonious side, um, but you know, it's personal preference. So go cool or go warm. Exactly. Kind of. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. So then um, to get the plants in, I just kind of push it back a little bit, mm -hmm. pull the roots in this way. And then um, because we've got that nice little slit, the plant can just sit in that spot there. Oh yeah, look at that. And so I've put a little bit of soil in here already. So you start with it about half full maybe? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, so then that way I cover up the roots in case, you know, if you're in the bright sun, you don't want the roots to get baked. Right. Um, and, and then you can use this to kind of anchor it in as well. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And so when you're doing this, you know, we'll do a petunia next. Again, I always like to kind of give it a quick clean up. Ooh. Are there are there certain plants that you don't use in the, like you choose to use in the front? Um, I mean, I know this is an ivy leaf geranium, so it kind of tends to naturally trail and drape some. Exactly. And petunias do the same thing. Yeah, you can use whatever you like. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of along the same theory as doing a container where you want to have your spillers mm -hmm. in the front. And your fillers yeah. and your thrillers and all that good so stuff. So your vines and trailers and those kinds of things would go in the front. Exactly. You wouldn't put a spike in the front. 
Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you would save, you know, a grass or something yeah, like that for the, for, um, the centerpiece. So again, and um, I kind of recommend right now I'm just wearing normal gardening gloves. Um, but if you're doing this, you can also grab a pair of rubber gloves, which kind of helps. <laughs> um, Makes but, it a little easier. you know, you can get, I tell uh, a lot of people, plants can take a lot more abuse than mm -hmm. what right. we think that they can. So then going in here and again, just putting this guy in and then kind of wrapping it around and then you can kind of give them a little intermingle. And the first couple days, it's going to be facing a little bit downwards, mm -hmm. but within a couple days, they start to really perk up. And they start to go up toward the sun then. Exactly. Okay. And you'll notice there's a little bit of a gap that kind of forms, and that's okay. Um, they're not going to fall out. Um, they, again, it's kind of one of those things where it is a lot stronger than you think it's going to be. I really like that you're cutting down from the top. I think some that I've seen in, you know, and I, we've probably talked about this before is that, you know, sometimes people cut a slit right in the middle, mm -hmm. but it just makes it really hard to plant because you're jamming the roots <laughs> through this hole instead of having more room and then just kind of sealing the liner back up around the, exactly. around the roots. I think this makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and I've seen them done that way as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I just feel like you can get more plant material in this way as well. Yeah. And you don't have to worry so much about the soil falling out. Yeah, that's true. Um, because you need a big enough hole to get the root ball through, <laughs> and then it can also fall back out again. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so then... Um, we can even use the um, nemesia in it. It'll stand up and really kind of fill in the gaps. Mm -hmm. That's and a pretty one. so again, you know, just trying to go with the contrasting textures to really make it pop once it's all flowing together like it does. For the full sun containers, I like to use just a nice um, organic matter potting soil, some that's got some peat, so it's gonna have some water retention to mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm and all of that so the same basically the same container mix you'd use in almost any container exactly mm -hmm. um and um you can throw in a slow release granular mm -hmm. um fertilizer if you want as well during this step um that works really really well and that way you don't have to keep uh keep fertilizing it all season long kind of gives you a little step do you feed them after they've planted typically um I give them a couple days to kind of, you know, planting's kind of like surgery for yeah, the plants. Yeah, they need some time to yeah. get in. Yeah. <laughs> so I tend to give them a few days um, to a week to kind of get established, let them mm -hmm. start to perk up and mm -hmm. face the sun. Um, and then I'll go ahead and start fertilizing them. And what's your uh, full strength? once a week or every time you water or half strength or how, how do you do that? Everyone yeah. has their favorite. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it kind of depends on the season. This season, it's been really, really warm. And I did a full strength fertilizer in the beginning of the season and I mm -hmm. ended up burning, which I've never done. Because it was so hot during the day. Because it was so hot. Uh, yeah. Um, so I've kind of switched to having more of a, instead of two scoops, using one scoop, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. kind of more often uh, feeding schedule. Uh -huh. And then, um, yeah, so you just keep building it like that, going around the edges. You can plant all the way into this little corner. Mm -hmm. I tend to save that corner because it can be a little bit difficult then to plant the top of it. Ah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and so when you start planting the top of it, you just, once again, lay out your design and, you know, you pull off these overgrowing roots. <laughs> um, and, you, and it doesn't hurt the plant to do that. It's fine. No, it's fine, especially but, in containers. Yeah. Um, you know, these plants have been hanging out waiting for a purpose um, a little too long so i like to break apart the roots mm -hmm. so that they can kind of tell them hey guys it's time to start growing and stretch out into the, yeah. the, the new the new space i'm so sorry guys yeah. <laughs> um, but they've been patiently waiting for their purpose and so you know make sure they're not root bound and kind of yeah. stretch it out and um so if you want to do you know, your back row. And, and you don't always wash them off in the back row. I don't. I don't really feel the need to do it in the back row right. simply because we are um, just putting them in and especially stuff like this that is for the taller things, then it kind of gives us the ability to um, 
fill in some space and that way we don't have to buy as much soil either. Right, which is always good. <laughs> right? So yeah, and then, um, you know, you've got your tall in the back row. Um, but I will probably rinse this one off a little bit because if I sit it in it's like that. It's a tight squeeze in there. Exactly. So back in here, just kind of tickling the roots like that. Give it a little shaky shake. <laughs> and so, you know, the plants get a little bit dirty, but at the end of the day, you just, when you water it in, you just give it a really good soaking. And water it when you just wash it all off. Exactly. Yeah. So mm -hmm. then, because that one's like that, so then you just put that guy like that and I, oops, sorry guy, I broke it. Mm -hmm. um, It'll be fine. Yeah. So, so you really do kind of have your uh, spiller, filler, thriller, Kind of exactly yeah yeah great and yeah i've seen i've done ones that are just all petunias it really mm -hmm. just depends on the effect that you're looking for if you mm -hmm. want something that's more rounded mm -hmm. um then you can go that way if you want something with a little bit of height to it then you can add mm -hmm. whatever you Something's like in, in it the back yeah this is yeah. really interesting yeah um so this is the full sun so once it's all planted up you'll um top it off yeah, you fill in any gaps. I like to water it in, let the wa the soil settle a little bit, and mm -hmm. then if I feel that there's a few gaps, then you can go ahead and do um, a little sprinkle of soil here and there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and you can even do Good. a little, um, you know, I have some smaller cell packs, so if you want to really, and if you want to pass me the dahlia too. Sure. Um, you know, and again, these guys are pretty root bound, so I'm gonna go ahead and break this up a little bit. Um, but you know, you can really, it's really up to you how many plants you wanna use in it. Um, I've- Just pack them, pack it full. Yeah. Don't be afraid to pack it full. <laughs> I kind of yeah. really enjoy the instant gratification. Yeah, <laughs> and that's kind so, of what containers are all about, right? Exactly, you know, <laughs> they're only around for so long, so then you just kind of keep building them out like that. and. Yeah, maybe we want another one of these is coming around the front and uh -huh. then it kind of all really blends pretty. together and That's really. Fun. And it's nice to have a bunch of different textures and um, habits. Exactly. You know, with the, anyway, there's just a lot of with the spikes and the grassy forms and the big petunia forms. And, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Lots of different options here. And you can use different color petunias together mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, That's literally good. whatever you want. So then you've topped it off and then you water it all in and wash off the. Um, yep. Wash off the plants and tell them to. It, yeah. Good luck, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so then, would you water every day after you get started? Would you say or? Yeah, I mean it's kind of site specific. Specific. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so yeah, it just kind of depends on where you're at. I have some places that I like to water every day because they are in full baking They're, sun, yeah. mm -hmm. and other places where I just water it every couple days. It really just depends on. So the So you just site. check it. I mean, you just check mm -hmm. the soil and see what happens. Yep. You Great. Can check it. You know. Um, you can't really check these ones by weight like I do with the containers, but, um, you know, if you're unsure, always just grab a moisture meter from yeah. the garden just center. Stick your and finger in it and see. Yep, exactly. Yep, that makes sense. Well, so this was a technique that you use for more sun containers, mm -hmm. and then you have a different technique that you use for some of your shade containers for yes. some kind of specific reasons. Let's take a look at those next. <laughs> so, Tara, this is another method that you use um, to plant up uh, hay racks. Why, why do you have a different method? So for the, um, the shade plants, they're just a little bit more tender. So I can't be quite as tough on them as mm -hmm. I am. I still wash the roots and all that good stuff. But, um, and this is also the original way that I learned how to do them. This is the, this is the old school this way, This is right? the old school <laughs> way, yes. So my mom taught me how to do this. And um, gosh, when she taught me this back in the early 90s, mm -hmm. um, she used chicken wire. Oh, wow. Which was just, as you can imagine, very difficult. Um, so what I use is a bird netting. Mm -hmm. And so I tie it in with the green plant tape. Mm -hmm. um, and I know it seems like there's a lot of tape here, but it really does just kind of disappear once it starts to get planted. And then I take... So you line the hole inside with, um, with a bird netting yes. kind of wrap. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so I start by doing it just through mm -hmm. all the front ones. Mm -hmm. And I used to try to get away without doing all the front ones, but you find that it starts to poke through oh, while you're yeah. planting. Because the goal is to hold this, um, this sphagnum exactly. in place. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and so um, I do the top row, and then I do a few down here, Pretty and nice. then I kind of move around to the back of it, and then mm -hmm. up to the top. Now, when you're planting these, do you um, for for all your hay racks, do you plant right in place? You hang the rack in in its final spot, and then you plant right in yes. right there. Yeah, that makes um, sense. That way, I don't have to worry about transportation. I have such, being in Colorado, such a short growing season mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that um, it would just be devastating to me to have, you know, some places have six hay racks and, and then, to have one get broken would just be. Yeah, <laughs> while you were on your way there. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot of work. Yeah. So that makes sense. So how do you get the, what, what do you, how do you get the, the sphagnum in? So the sphagnum moss, I just buy bales of the New Zealand sphagnum mm -hmm. moss, uh -huh. um, and then I soak it overnight in a bucket of water okay. until it's all nice and loose. And then I just start hand packing it. Mm -hmm. So we start in the bottom, and then I move around to the front of it. And you don't have to be really, really thick with it or anything like that, as long as you can't see any gaps. Um, and this will this will hold the soil all into the hay rack. Exactly. And um, do, I used to always squeeze mine out some, but I don't see you squeezing it. Is it better not to squeeze it out? Um, it doesn't really, really matter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've just always done it yeah. with just. Um, I think know. it sticks together better if the wetter it is. Probably it's definitely messy. Yeah. Um. So <laughs> <laughs> be prepared. <laughs> But so yeah, so I just kind of go around until I reach uh, about an inch or two before the top. And then this can be a little bit tricky and sometimes it's a little bit easier if you have a second hand. Of course, luckily you do right uh, now. Yeah. What can I do? Um, so I'm gonna hold it. Okay. Well here, actually, I think I can get this up here. You want me to hold it? Yeah, so the nice part about working with a small bag. <laughs> um, and sometimes if I'm alone and I'm working with a larger bag, I'll put it in a bucket. Ah. Um, typically for the hay racks that are gonna be in the shade, mm -hmm. I'll use a high porosity soil. Um, and that way it just doesn't hold quite as much water, um, less of a risk of overwatering it. Because especially with some of the shade plants that you, you really like to grow, like begonias, mm -hmm. they hate to get wet or they hate to sit yes. and be wet for a long time. Yes. Right. And as we know, one of the biggest problems that we have is that we overlove our plants. Yeah. <laughs> more things, more things suffer from overwatering than under. Exactly. <laughs> um, so I run that risk with um, if I don't have a chance to water, and I have um, one of my amazing crew members do it. Mm -hmm. um, it just kind of helps with the. I think it's wet, but I'm just going to add a little bit more water to it, just yeah. in case. And then yeah. a week later, you're like, oh, no. <laughs> um, so I do like to tell all my crew members for shade plants that if the plant has kind of a dull color to it, that means it needs water. Mm -hmm. um, but if it has kind of a yellowy color to it, that means it's going to be overwatered if you yeah. add just a little bit more to it. Makes sense. Um, it's a good so, good. Good rule of thumb. Yes. So we just keep moving all the way around. Um, it's okay if some of the soil gets on the outside. And then to start doing the planting. So you do um, sort of halfway up with the moss mm -hmm. and then fill it up to that level and then you add more moss after that. Exactly. So now we have it all lined and filled with um, potting mix and so it's time to start planting, right? Yes. <laughs> So for the shade containers, I like to use a little bit smaller size. Um, so I use the two and a half inch, as well as the four, uh, four pack mm -hmm. size or six packs, any of the cell packs work. Um, same theory, we want to come in, break up the roots on these poor root bound guys, give it a little Swishy, swish, swish. <laughs> if you really want to go super, super colorful, because we are using the two sizes, the smaller sizes, we can do a two and one. Oh, yeah. So being a little bit more careful with the impatience and the begonias. Because they're 
Such brittle stems. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then I just kind of will hold them like that. Okay. But first we need to take and cut a hole in our netting. So. And do you do that between every, um, each bar? Yes. For, the, for so, these containers too? Yep. Okay. Just like on the, sh on the sun ones, I will go in and just cut a couple of them, get my finger in there, kind of feel it out, see how it is. Make sure it's big enough. Exactly. Um, if you cut a hole that's too big, mm -hmm. like sometimes I accidentally cut a huge hole, um, you can just back stuff it with some sphagnum. Oh, um, that's right. the beauty of using the sphagnum. It's really flexible. Exactly. So we've got one in there and then we'll put the other guy in. Just being really careful with that one, but with the impatience especially. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's going to be, there's a little bit of space here. So I'm just going to take a little bit more sphagnum and pack around it to, to hold make it in place. sure. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't matter if the sphagnum gets on the roots or anything like that. It all kind of grows together. Yeah. Eventually anyway. And so we just keep going down like that way and using um, different textures and varieties of plants. Um, again, this is a three and a half inch size, so it's a little bit bigger, but I just love this fuchsia. Um, I think it gives a really great effect with its red veins and oh, it is pretty. chartreuse leaves. And you'll also get the fuchsia flower as it goes along. Mm -hmm. And will this, will this be in the, in the front? This is a trailer mm -hmm. that you're planting in the front? Yeah. Ooh, pretty. So I'll put it in the front and it kind of goes a little bit wild and gives you a yeah. little, <laughs> little funkiness. So cut the hole. I put the fuchsia on in. And then, you know, you can make Wine him hang things. out with the other guy. Mm -hmm. And at this point, you can keep using the same color of the impatience if you want, or you can switch it up with maybe a white one. And, um, you know, there's, thankfully, there's really no wrong combinations with plants. Yeah. <laughs> so some of your favorite shade plants for hay racks, impatience, fuchsias. Yes, um, fuchsias, um, we have, this fabulous begonia here. This one's especially great. You can put it in front without issue because it's got a definitely sturdier stem than what the nonstops have. Interesting. Huh. So in the ones that I showed you before, the shade containers, these ones are right front and center. And they do, yeah, they do they really do well. They do great. And then- You've got some um, beautiful terrinias here. Not, yeah, this oh, is such a great so blue. Um, I've used lobelia in them. Mm -hmm. um, I've used vinca. I use coleus in mm -hmm. them as um, the thriller. So, oh right, yeah. You know, again, the back. you can mm -hmm. have the um, have a spiller on the edge, like this great guy here. Because he's on the edge, you don't have to go all the way down to his roots. Uh -huh. um, but he'll mix in great, and then you can put the coleus in here right behind him. So I think that's really interesting, the idea of washing off, uh, especially the front row of plants or the, the ones that go in the, in the facing, the, the front face of the um, container. But then whatever you need to, to get them all packed in as much as you want. I mean, just really, they all should be just packed in as tightly as possible. I, I, um I like to think of when I'm planting containers that I'm placing the plants more than planting the plants. Mm -hmm. um, and I really like to have that wow factor right from the get-go. Right, and it just makes so much sense. That's the look we're all going for in our hanging baskets <laughs> and hay racks and containers. And it's just, it doesn't always happen. <laughs> A lot of times it's because we're just not using enough plants. Yes, and but you know, in different environments, you have the luxury of the heat and the humidity right. and a little bit of extra time. But mm -hmm. you know, June tenth, my safety date for frost. Um, so and can't and can't do a lot before that. With, exactly. with these plants, many of these would just yeah not, not make it. Yeah, and by mid September, you know, so I really Again. only have three we three months to really enjoy them. Right. 
So I like to go super close together, but uh -huh. if I was back in Ohio or somewhere like where I grew up, mm -hmm. I might place them a little bit further apart. Because to, knowing that they'd be there longer together. So Exactly, yeah, that exactly. And that way I wouldn't have to buy so many of them. Yeah. And, all so many great stuff. tips today. This is really, really helpful and really fun too. Oh, thanks. I've really enjoyed seeing all of your containers and getting all of your ideas. And um, I hope you guys have enjoyed it too. Thanks a lot, Tara. Thank you. <laughs> it's been great. Thank you.